I can't put it off any longer. Time to start installing my new spindle. So the problem with doing this upgrade is this spindle with its mounting bracket is actually three times heavier than the current router and fans that I have installed on my machine. I don't know whether this stepper motor here has sufficient power to lift the new spindle. Even if it does, I don't know whether it will work correctly when doing 3D machining. 3D machining really puts the machine through its paces and if there's any weakness in that z-axis it will show up when we do that. So rather than put it in place, wire it up, try and cut something, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this mounted onto here and then I'm going to do some static testing to check whether the z-axis loses any steps. That way I know whether it's worth continuing on with the upgrade or whether I have to hold off and do a bit of rethinking to get this installed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the old router. But to make sure that I am not wasting my time off, I have to put it back. I'm just going to remove it and just sit it up on top of the gantry here out of the way. Now I can look at this arrangement here. Just going to drop the stepper down and now I can look at removing these four bolts that hold this bracket in place. Now that I've got the original bracket off of here, you can see the makeup here of my z-axis. And I've been through and measured and found that these holes are one inch apart vertically and one and three quarter inches apart horizontally. I'll be transferring those marks on to my mounting plate here and drilling them out. Now unlike this one here where the bolts went all the way through that's not a possibility for this one here so I'm going to drill and tap these here with six millimeter bolts which will suit that. These holes are quarter inch which will give me a small amount of side twist that I can use to adjust the angle of the router to make sure it's parallel to the table. I'm supporting this here between two pieces of steel because the bottom of it's rounded and I want to stop it moving about while I'm working on it. So I've marked a center line here and then from that center, I'm going to come out 0 0.875. Just put a mark here. And now I'll square that mark down. Now, rather than do the same on the other side and go out, uh, 0.875, I'm going to go out 1.75, which is the distance between the holes on my backing plate. There we go, and I'll just square that one down as well. Now the advantage of doing it this way is that if there is an error measuring it from the center, I'm not accumulating that error as I go to the other side. So I'm just going to check it against the holes on this plate here. And that looks good, they match. So I've got my spacing right this way. And now I'll do the same this way here. And again, I can use this old bracket here to check and that looks good the holes are in the center at each point so that's excellent I can now center punch these holes and drill them out to the required size 
So I'm going to start by drilling a small pilot hole here using the center punch marks that I used. I'm not going to set up a jig this time. I'm using just a three, two and a half millimeter drill bit and I'm going to use a little bit of cutting fluid to try and prevent any of the swarf sticking to the cutter here. And I've set the uh, drill press down to 280 RPM. I'll just keep adding a little bit more cutting fluid as it gets used up here. My drill bit here has got a little bit clogged, but because it's lubricated, those chips just fall straight off. With the pilot holes drilled, I now need to enlarge the hole out to its final size. Now I've downloaded the chart off the internet here, and it says that for a 6mm thread with a 1mm pitch, I need to drill a 5mm hole if I'm drilling it into aluminium. If I'm drilling it into steel, it would need to be a 5.4mm hole. So I'll put a 5mm drill in here, and now I'm going to enlarge in these holes. Now, if you want to ruin all the hard work you've done up until now, this is the way to do it. Put the spindle clamp into the vise, grab your tap, and start tapping out these holes. If you want to do it properly, here's a better way. I'm going to take it back to the drill press. I'm going to take my tap, and I'm going to put it into the chuck of the drill press. I'm going to position it above the hole and I'm going to put the tap in the hole like so and then start turning it quietly by hand. And I'll keep turning it like so until it stops going in. It'll get to a point where I won't be able to turn it anymore. There you go, it's now that you're starting to slip in the chuck. I'm now going to take the chuck key out. Release it, and now I can take this back to the vise. Now with the tap handle, I can put it onto the tap and start winding it down to the hole. By doing it this way, it's going to be nice and square to the hole. Trying to do it by hand, it's going to go in on an angle. What I also can do is lubricate it with a little bit of cutting oil. Just take it quietly when you're doing this. Aluminium is known to grip and could end up breaking a cutter. Now that's a really nice tap thread. All I gotta do is another five. So the next thing I've done is I've gone through, once the holes were tapped, 
I went through and sanded this plate with just a bit of 240 grit sandpaper just on the outside edge to remove any burrs and in here. I also blew out these thread with some compressed air to make sure there's no swarf caught in them. So we're now up to mounting and I'm, to mount it I'm going to use a 6mm bolt, a spring washer and just an ordinary washer. I'll just go through and screw in to the plate and if my holes all aligned I won't have any problem doing this. Now I'm really pleased to say that this went on really well. The bolts did line up and I had no trouble putting them in. Now for those of you who haven't got a bracket of this nature here, it comes with three bolts. The first two which sit on the outside go through the top here and bolt down into the bottom piece here. And when you bolt them up that clamps this tighter and it holds the spindle in place. This one's different. This one threads into the top piece here and there is no corresponding hole in the bottom. So when you bolt this one here in, it forces it open. So that could be quite handy if your router is just a little bit tight getting in there, which mine is and I don't have a problem getting it in there, but if you want to spread it, that clamp a little bit more, you could do that with this here. Other than that, I'm not exactly sure what its purpose in life is. But let's see what happens. We'll put our spindle down here like so and I should be able to tighten it up without any difficulty at all Just be careful if you do put this one in, don't wind in too far because it'll stop you clamping the bracket up properly. And don't over tighten the bracket either, you don't need that much pressure to hold it in place. And there we have it, the spindle is installed. Now for the moment of truth, will it go up and down? Only one way to find out. Now that's at maximum jog rate, here we go, so it's still working at maximum jog rate, that's great, but that doesn't mean it's any use for 3D machining, it can still use a machine that works perfectly fine for 2D machining can really fail when trying to do a bit of 3D machining, so next trick is we need to test it. I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to butt it up against the hose clamp here that's around my coupling nut. I'm going to draw a line on here and I'll be using this line as a reference point to check whether I've lost steps or not later on. Now for this test I've loaded up a 3D model, it's of a horse's head. Now I'm going to go into configuration and I'm going to go along to the x-axis and I'm just going to disable it. Likewise for the y and the a-axis. This leaves only the z-axis running on the machine. I'll apply those settings, go back to run, and now I can start running this file. So as you can see, the z-axis here is now going ape, and that's because it doesn't need to run the x and y commands it normally has to. Makes it run a lot faster, we can run our file quickly, and when it's finished, we'll check to see if it's still in alignment when the z is back at zero. To make its life a bit more difficult, I've got here another 2.5 kg, or 5 pound of weight, which I'm just going to sit on top here. And its purpose is to add additional load to it to cover the dust shoe and anything else, any additional friction that might come in uh, later on, uh, just to give it a margin of safety. So we'll see how it runs, and if it runs all right, then we know we're not going to have any problem with our 3D machining.
Well, that's it done. 22 minutes of machining. That's pretty hard going in anyone's language. Let's see if it's actually worked, shall we? Going to set, go to the origin point. Now here's the test. Here's the pencil mark I drew before I started machining with my ruler up against the edge of the hose clamp here. I'm now going to take my ruler and put it back against the edge of the hose clamp and as you can see the rule li lines up perfectly with that line. This machine has not lost a single step. That's a great result and we can move on with the rest of the install. Well I don't know about you guys but I'm really pleased that I don't have to rebuild that z-axis to make it work. In the next episode we'll be looking at making the spindle run. I need to get the control box installed for it. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my website, www.cncnuts.com, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers!